Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, this, uh, this little group uh, call is going to be around uh, getting to your annual goals with 12 week action plans. And really, we're going to go beyond your uh, yearly goals and think three to five years out. So everything that we're going to reference in this comes from three main books. The one thing written by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan, the 12 week year written by Brian, uh, Brian Moran, and Atomic Habits by James Clear. So three amazing books. If you haven't read them, I absolutely recommend them. Now, one of the things that we know is the most successful people execute better than their competition. That's all it is. It's a better execution. It has nothing to do about being more talented. It has nothing to do about being more, having better ideas. It's all about consistent execution. It's not a lack of ideas. So one of the things that we're really going to nail in on today is making sure that we have that emotional connection. And that emotional connection is a connection between your personal vision and your business vision. Your business vision is actually what funds your personal vision. And if we don't have that alignment, you have those days where you don't necessarily want to wake up and go to work. You have those days where you don't necessarily want to go do the hard things. Or we lose sight of what our day needs to look like. We allow time to control us rather than us controlling time. Now, Fritz, when you hear that, what does that mean to you? Well, you know, when you look at a, a really important goal to uh, all of us and you set it in a one-year perspective, it sometimes actually creates complacency. It, it's so far out in the future that it, it maybe loses its meaning. It certainly loses its urgency. What you're going to hear about today around time is, is when we compact and condense the urgency of a one-year, a three-year, a five-year journey into a 12-week sprint, it changes the way you show up. It changes the urgency of the way you attack your day. And I think what you're going to love about this, and, and credit to Sajag, who's done a lot of research around this and, and created some really helpful tools, is you're going to find that your goals are much more attainable because of the sprint mentality. Yeah, one of the most important things, and, and I want you guys to write this down, your vision creates ownership. Your vision creates ownership. Now, when we have a vision, if we just have the vision and we don't create a plan around it, it's just a dream. It lives in our head. So it's really important that we take that vision and we actually write it out into a plan. And it's important, and Fritz, you heard me talk about this this week, is, you know, at some point in our life, we stop dreaming. We stop being a kid and we stop dreaming. And we adulthood kicked in where we started putting all these limiting beliefs on ourselves about, oh, I can't do that or I can't do this. And what I encourage you guys through uh, this vision setting uh, exercise that we're going to go through is... Start dreaming. Go back to when you were a kid again. Because the, you would never put a limit, a limit on what dreams your kids have. You would never tell your kid that they could never be an NFL football player or an NBA basketball player or a gymnast for the Olympics. Yet we tell ourselves all the time that we can't do things. We stop dreaming. Or we, stopped, we start saying, well... I'm never going to have an investment property. Oh, it's impossible for me to go generate $100,000 in passive income. We start having those conversations in our head and we cause ourselves to get paralyzed. Prince, what do you want to add to that? You know, just to go back to um, what life does to adults is, is through our experiences, we create programming, um, when we were kids, that was big thinking, and it gets reduced down to small thinking. And I have to tell you something, and, and this isn't about parenting at all, but the reality is, is sometimes our limiting belief is setting new ceilings for our kids. So if we're sitting here today looking at how do we reconnect with thinking bigger, please understand your kids are watching. You are their first teacher. And so when we can go back to being a kid again, when it comes to big thinking and then create a plan that allows us to get there, your kids are watching you as the professor. And so this is really a whole person coaching call today that begins with you 
the ending is unclear because it could impact many. Yeah. So enjoy this call today and enjoy the journey. So once we establish your vision, the next thing we're going to do is go create the plan. Now, the benefits of a plan is it reduces mistakes, it saves time, and it provides focus. Now, if you think about that, if you were to drive maybe a thousand miles away from wherever, where you're at today, maybe, maybe you're in Pennsylvania, you're going to drive to California. Now, you're not just going to jump in a car and start driving. Because if you did that, it might take you a month, two months to get to California. Versus if you utilize the GPS, which is your plan, you could probably get there in five days. It's also going to save you a ton of time and it keeps you focused on the path that you need to go on. That's the same exact thing we're going to do here. Now, by chunking it down to a 12-week plan, what does that do for you? Well, there's three main things that it does. It creates predictability. It keeps you more focused and it provides structure. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever set annual goals, but how many times do we start off really strong? That first month, like we're kicking it. We're doing extremely well. And then in February, March kicks in and all of a sudden that plan that we created ended up on a bookshelf. We stopped looking at it. And then our business kind of rides this roller coaster like all the other agents do. But then come October, November, you're like, oh man, I better kick it into gear. We're coming close to the end of the year. I got to finish the year strong. That happened, anyone? Yeah. Well, what if you no longer had 12 months to give yourself that story to say, well, I still got nine more months to hit my goal. I still have seven more months. And now you literally had 12 weeks to hit your goal. And if you think about it, every week is a month. Week one is January. Week two is February. Week three is March. So every week is a month. Then what we're going to do is every nine, week nine and week 10, you're going to start doing your next 12 weeks planning. Does that sound familiar? We usually do business planning in September and October. Well, that's week nine and week 10. So we'd start planning the next 12 weeks so that you're already doing taking action on what it would take to hit the next 12 weeks goal. Now I'm walking you through this fairly quickly and I'm gonna slow down here in a minute so that then I can tie everything together and show you the worksheet that we're gonna share with you. So we created the vision, we create the plan and now we got to have ownership of it. And some of us struggle with numbers. And numbers tell us a story. Right? Numbers are actually confronting the truth. And they're measuring results. The numbers track our behavior. And our job is to ensure that our behaviors are in alignment with your vision. Does that make sense? So the last part of this, we're going to allow you to create a 12-week action plan. There's an entire worksheet where you get to create the 12-week action plan. And then on a weekly basis, we're going to show you how you keep score. And we're going to take you back to the last time you were in school. Might have been high school, might have been college, whatever it was. But when's the last time you actually graded your performance on a weekly basis and gave yourself a grade? Well, we're going to go back to giving yourself a grade because I'm sure for those of you that have kids, if your kids were bringing C's, D's, and F's to you every single week, I'm sure you'd have a conversation with them. Am I correct? Well, if you were performing at a C, D, or an E, or an F, you would have a conversation with yourself, right? So we're going to show you how you're going to be able to reflect on your own performance and how you're gonna create little accountability groups so that you can have a mastermind around the things that you could do to actually stop the, the lack of performance per se, right? And it, we simplify this entire thing into a small document, all three of these books and the concept into a small document, but it starts with you. If we don't have clarity around where you want to go, what's the likelihood we end up getting there? 
It's not very big, right? And if you're really clear about where you want to be in life, three years, five years, and we've heard Gary Keller talk about this a lot. He says, we have a tendency to overestimate what we can accomplish in one year and underestimate what we can accomplish in five years. And this plan that we're gonna present allows you to accomplish more than you can even imagine by just executing on. And we've been coaching a team around this over the last year, we labbed it. And that team, every single individual on the team, every single individual doubled their income in a 12 month span. Now who here would like to double their income next year? Everyone, right? Well, that team overall, they had a goal of hitting 125 million. That team ended the year at 175 million in closed volume. Now they way blew past their goal and this was the first time they ever did it. So I promise you guys, if you adopt the system, it works. But it starts with you. You have to take ownership of it. Fritz, is there anything you want to say before we show them the worksheet and walk them through the no, system? I, I think it's well said. I, I, I will just make this final comment before we see what the roadmap looks like is be okay having this be a different journey for you than you're used to. This dovetails right in with the business plan that you've already created, the GPS you may have already created, the 411 you've already created. Be open-minded enough to take a slightly different path to get to a different destination a year from today. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna start with you and we're gonna go straight to the seven circles. And this is right out of the one thing. Now, we're gonna put the link here in the chat box for you guys to go download this worksheet. I don't want you to work on it now. I'm gonna walk you through it so that you can do this on your own time and actually spend some time with it. I'm gonna give you guys some hint, uh, pointers on how you can bulletproof this because this is the most important part of any goal setting. Because if your vision isn't clear, the plan that you create will be worthless because it's, it's meaningless to you. So this is really, really important. So the very first thing that we have you do is in each one of these seven circles, the physical health, the personal life, key relationships, job, business, finances, and spiritual, Rate yourself on where you're at today on a scale of one to 10. One being life couldn't be any worse in that area. 10 being it couldn't be any better. There's no right or wrong answer to this. It's whatever you want to rate yourself in each one of those areas. The next thing we have you do is you're going to look at it and you're going to ask yourself the question, why did I rate my physical health? Maybe you rated it a five. Why did I rate it a five? What does that five mean to me today? Maybe my personal life, I rated myself a seven. Write down exactly why you rated it a seven. Be very descriptive. The more descriptive you are, the more clarity you will have. Once you write that description down, the next question you wanna ask yourself is, what do you want life to look like in your physical health? What do you want life to look like in your personal life? Now, as you're describing that, we want you to create that like you're creating a SMART goal. Be specific. Make sure it's measurable. It's action-based. It's relevant and time-bound. So maybe in your physical health, maybe your goal is to lose 10 pounds. Well, great. Is it just to lose 10 pounds or to maintain a certain weight? Because the maintenance part of it is a longer journey. It's not an event that just happens once. And then we say we reached our goal. And then two weeks later, we go get that 10 pounds back. And I'm just using that as an example is, you know, I've heard people say, well, some of my goals are longer. Some of my goals won't take me as long. And it's the consistency that matters. So you're going to create, what do you want life to look like in each one of those areas? And you're going to write it down, you're going to describe it. And you're going to make sure it follows a SMART goal. Once you've done that, you're going to go back and look at what you wrote on where you're at today. 
And you're going to go look at what you wrote for where you want to be in the future. And you're going to make sure that that excites you. That's truly who you want to be. Because remember, this is about you achieving what, what's really important to you, that future person. And in bold, we talk about it. It's the be, do, achieve. So who do you need to become? Who do you need to start behaving like today in order for you to start doing the things that are necessary in order for you to achieve the results that you want? Once you've done describing that and you've nailed it, and I challenge people with this all the time is, you know, today what you wrote, it might not be deep enough. And you may need to think about it some more. So this exercise, I want you to look at it first thing every single morning and ask yourself the question, does this excite me? This future version of myself, does, is that who I really want to be? And if it's not, change it. Make the changes necessary every day until you stop making changes. Because once you've nailed that, then we can move forward. And the question that you're going to ask yourself is, how soon would I like to be this person? Is this a three-year vision? Is this a five-year vision? And don't go past five. Because like Gary said, we overestimate what we can accomplish in one year and underestimate what we can accomplish in five. Now, this has been a challenge for a lot of people I've talked to in that they're like, well, I can't think past this next year. And this is where I'm going to ask you to go dream. Forget about what life looks like today. Go recreate your life. Write it down. What do you want it to look like? And then once you've done that, you're going to rate that area of your life. Once you've achieved that new version of yourself, the new physical uh, health that you wanted on a scale of one to 10, one being it couldn't be any worse, 10 being it can't be any better, you're going to rate it. Now, Fritz, you and I have had a conversation around this because we, we talked about this is that, you know, sometimes your ratings may go up or down. Right. And if you're rating it at a 10, that could be an issue too. Tell us more about that. Well, and, and just to kind of look at the whole rating process, as you look at this from left to right, and you're starting with your uh, where you are today, rate yourself first. And then as you do the descriptive view of that, um, you may actually find that you go and change your rating where you are today. Remember, it's just a number, but when you actually verbalize or create a narrative around where you believe you are today, it's the same concept as journaling. Journaling creates um, a tap, it, it taps into your, your unconscious mind. And you may find that your rating is off. If you put yourself though at a 10, I wanna ask yourself the question, are you sure there's no more room for growth? I mean, one of the things that, that, that we look at as coaches is when someone says 10s across the board, well, then I guess you've arrived. Yet we may actually open up a new question. Um, where do you need to stretch and grow yourself? So if you're getting tens, be aware of that. Also though, don't be afraid to change a rating after you reread or go deep around what you wrote. This is a working document. It is not typed, rated and prioritized and then it's done. As Sajak said, you may be reviewing this every single day and making tweaks and adjustments as you go. Yeah, and the other thing to remember is if we go back to the one thing and Gary talks about it in the one thing is that we're constantly counterbalancing. We're never going to have a balanced life. So you're not going to rate yourself a 10 across the board or a nine across the board. That's not, that's not true. Right. And the reality of it is, is anytime one or two areas of your life increases, there's at least one or two areas that are going down a little bit. So make sure you remember that because what you have to accept is, am I okay as my job and business go down, uh, go up? Maybe my physical health is going to take a little bit of a hit. You have to ask yourself that question. Am I okay with it? Because it becomes really important as we focus on the next thing, which is prioritizing these seven key areas in order of priority. And referencing the one thing again, it's that lead domino. What's the most important domino that we need to focus on? That by focusing on it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. 
So you're going to ask yourself the focusing question, right? What's the one thing I need to focus on such that if I focus on it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. For some of us, it may be focusing on our job. Some of us, it might be business. Some of us, it might be personal health or personal life. And yet what we know is that when you get crystal clear on what that lead domino is, everything else just falls in place. And as we do our goal setting, we're going to focus on your one, two, and three key priorities. So when you're going through and prioritizing this, you're going to go one to seven. There's seven circles of life. We're literally going to go and rank them in order one to seven. What's the most important thing? And some of this, you'll notice that it actually takes care of itself. Meaning that when you focused on the number one thing, it actually knocks four or five other dominoes down. Mm. So I'm going to stop the screen share here. What questions do you have here before we continue? So I, I saw one question come up. What's the difference between job and business? This does hang us up a little bit. And so we'll just give you uh, the, the clarity that we've gained through coaching around this for the ha last handful of months. A job would be the role that you're currently in. You're the rainmaker, you're the listing specialist, you're the buyer's agent. That's the, the job that you have. But the business could be the other overriding aspects. So like, for instance, how's the business doing from a profitability standpoint? Are we hitting our metrics for conversion of listing appointments or listings taken? It would be the broader business itself. There could be another angle to this. Your job is what you go to work and collect a paycheck for. Your business could be your investments, your stock market um, returns. Uh, I was joking with someone the other day, your, your paper route, your, your babysitting fees. Um, you know, the reality is it could be your whole financial picture that's not your real estate business. So if you're a single agent, that may be the perspective. It, it's your, your investments, your other uh, opportunities. If you have a big team, your job is your role. Your business is the whole team. Does that make sense? Yep. And Fritz, the other thing I would add is you're, when you think about business, think about it as it's, the, uh, it's one of the L's in uh, the three L's, right? It's the leverage point. It's the leverage point that allows you to either gain time back or generates money for you, okay? And, and passive money when I say that, okay? So there's, there was another question in here. Um, should we ever be able to reach a level 10? Wouldn't we stop growing? Matt, that's all up to you, 100% right. I don't ever rate myself a 10 in anything. I'm my biggest critic. And the, the, the reason for it, it's not right or wrong, but it's because I'm, I'm learning-based. I constantly know that I can improve. And even once I re reach a certain level, I know that there's room for improvement or there's a different level that I want to go to. Now, there was another question about the lead domino may change every week to hit other dominoes. Your lead domino is not going to change. Your action changes week to week. Your focus changes. And we're going to address that. But in order for you to achieve that long-term goal, that three to five-year goal, you have to stay laser focused on what's the most important thing. Your actions can change week to week, but your focus is always going to stay the same. Does that help? Okay, we're going to go, we're going to keep moving on here. So the next part of this is now it's time to go create the plan. And so when we create the plan, is just like you guys have seen before, this is the GPS. The only difference now is we have a 12 week goal. So you're going to take that three to five year goal and it's going to go right up top here and you're going to go create a smart goal around it. And that smart goal, remember, it's specific, it's measurable, it's action based, it's relevant and time bound. And you want to get laser clear on that smart goal and it's going to cover your priority one, two and three from your seven circles exercise. When you get down to the 12 week goal, you're gonna ask yourself the question, what do I need to accomplish this next 12 weeks to get me one step closer to that three or five year goal? 
You're going to chunk it down. So maybe your goal looks something like you want to close um, 50 million in volume to take your net worth from 200,000 to 400,000 over the next three years through wealth education and key relationships. Now, all of that is smart. It's measurable. It's action-based. It's relevant and it's time bound. And Fritz, how many circles does that actually cover? Well, and, and you bring up a really good point. Uh, probably a really good goal would, would uh, cover up to five circles. So, you know, what I heard in your outline is there's, there's a business or a production goal that obviously impacts a financial goal. Um, a lot of times we may be looking at key relationships, which also build our business. So you got that box checked. And before you know it, you have four or five, maybe even upwards of six circles covered just in your annual goal that has a lot of business weight to it, yet facets that address the other circles. Yeah, and so maybe now I'm gonna chunk that down into my, my 12 week goal is to have $2 million in, in closed volume and to go hire my first executive admin that's going to set me up to do two and a half million in closed volume the next 12 weeks, right? So I'm already building my next 12 weeks and the action that I need to take this 12 weeks in order to hit it. Remember, we're taking out the annualized thinking and we're chunking it down. So maybe my first priority now on this, in order for me to hit the 2 million in closed volume is I need to go generate and, and take eight listings. So that's my very first priority. And my second priority is I need to go hire an EA because that's going to set me up for the next 12 weeks. And now this is where I get to go pick one of my other circles and say, okay, well, based on my, my physical health being the number three, I want to make sure that I'm working out five days a week and following a certain diet. That's my third priority. So this allows you to get laser focused. And the beauty of this entire system is every 12 weeks, I get to reset and refocus on what's important for me that next 12 weeks. Now think about this. March 13th happened this year. What happened, Fritz? Well, let's, let's be clear. Uh, our worlds uh, for the whole, uh, certainly US, uh, and, and I'm sure we could say the world as a whole, changed maybe forever. COVID hit, our office got shut down, many of your offices got shut down, we were told to go home and stay there for a while. Yeah, so imagine if we had created that 12 uh, week plan instead of an annual plan, how quickly could we have pivoted versus what a lot of what we saw through coaching was a lot of people were lost. They didn't know what they had to do. They had to restructure their entire year rather than if we were following a 12 week plan, we could have quickly pivoted. We wouldn't have missed a beat. So this plan allows us, because most of us are planning our vacations, we know what happens 12 weeks out. Now, the other question I ask is, Fritz, we know that there's 13 weeks in a quarter and there's four weeks in a year. If this is a 12 week plan, what happened to the 13th week? It's a great concept. And, and what we're learning is that if we really work hard and work a plan, that 13th week is a retooling week. It's a planning week. It's a forecasting week. Heck, it might even be a catch-up week if, if we need to. And yet at the end of the day, um, you know, when you build a schedule so fat and, and without any flexibility or cushion, sometimes that's a plan destined to fail. This 12-week approach gives you a little bit of flex, a little bit of cushion for life to show up just in case you need to push out to that 13th week to make it whole. And if you hit your goal at the end of the 12 weeks, guess what? There's a built-in vacation. That week 13 becomes a vacation. Now, when's the last time any of you have taken an entire month off for vacation? Because this plan in a full year actually has four weeks of vacation built in. If you execute your 12-week your plan and you hit your goals every 12 weeks, 
you get four weeks of vacation. It gives you an amazing opportunity to lean in extremely hard, work really hard for 12 weeks, take a week off, and then come back and go execute again. Now, if there's holidays in it or you life shows up, just like Fritz said, you have that 13th week to make it up. But by creating a plan that's so solid around what's important to you this next 12 weeks, we're chunking it down. We're creating a lot of focus and intentionality. Intentionality is really, really important in this system. Now, what questions do you have before we keep going on? I'm sure there's a lot. I have a question. Sure. Difference between realistic goal and lofty goals. I think there's something about always pushing ourselves. How much do you try to stay rooted in what's considered realistic so that you can get to your 12 week and complete it and feel successful versus stretching yourself so much that you're like, well, there's probably a very low likelihood that I'll achieve this. Yeah, that's a great question, Julian. If you go back to how we started this is this is why we're getting away from annualized thinking. This no longer, there's no such thing as realistic or a stretch goal anymore in that because you're thinking three to five years out, we know that if we work the plan backwards, you're absolutely going to hit it, right? So now the question becomes is when I set my 12-week goal, is that goal in alignment with what I know I can accomplish? Is it a little bit more than what I've done before? Now, the, the, the story that I shared with you guys about the team who did double the income. All they did was they stretched themselves a little bit more from the previous 12 weeks. Their first 12 weeks created the foundation. The next 12 weeks, they kept building on it towards that three, five-year goal. So there is no such thing as what's a realistic goal or versus what's a stretch goal. And what we're really going to do is just say, okay, what do I need to do to be a little bit better? Maybe this 12 weeks, I closed 2 million. What would I have to do differently in order to close two and a half, three million in the next 12 weeks? And you keep working that up. Now, here's the other thing is we know in, in real estate, there's, some, there's a little bit of seasonality, right? In all of our markets, there's a little bit. If you can look at your historical data, go pull your multi-year trends and look at your data and say, okay, what's the best 12-week period that I've had? If I go look at a 12-week period in, the, in January, February, March, what's my best year ever? Because that's kind of setting your benchmark. And you're going to say, okay, can I do better than that this 12 weeks? Then go look at your April, uh, May, June and go ask the same question. Can I do a little bit better than my best year ever in those three months? And then we're going to go to the same next uh, for the next quarter. And you just keep reworking that plan and push yourself a little bit more. But with this action-based plan that uh, we're going to help you put together here in a minute, you're going to be able to accomplish more because everything is rewarded on the actions that you take not on the results. See guys, here's one of the things that we do. We wait until we hit a goal and then to celebrate it, right? Yet in order to hit the goal, you had to make a lot of choices in order for you to get there. Why aren't we celebrating making all the choices, the right choices? And when we wake up every day, we have a choice. We either go do the things that are necessary in order to hit our goals, or we allow our, our schedule and time to be controlled by our clients, by our team, by our families. And we don't stay focused on what's most important that allows me to get closer to my goal. Now, I'm not saying life's not going to happen, but celebrate making the right choices. Celebrate at the end of every week if you've scored an 85% or better, because the book says if during the 12 week period, if you average an 85% or better, you're going to hit your goal for that 12 week period. And guys, I've been coaching to this. It works. If you scored a 40 or 50% in the very first week, which is more than likely to happen, you have 11 more weeks to get caught up. It's about getting a little bit better every single week. And remember, you get to grade yourself. This isn't someone telling you what to do. This is what you committed to yourself. This was a personal commitment you made towards your vision. So if you're not, if you're not executing on your commitments, what are you saying? Are you saying your vision 
has zero meaning behind it? Are you saying the vision that you created isn't important to you? Because that's your choice. Because the way you show up every day determines if that vision is important or not. See, we have a tendency to go blame things. COVID happened, so we blame COVID. Oh, I can't do open houses anymore. I can't go pick up buyers. So we make excuses. Well, the reality is we just didn't think about the other ways that we can go get business. We're allowing the external forces that we have zero control, control our ability to go hit our dreams, hit our goals. And instead of making excuses, this system's going to allow you to take 100% ownership of it. This system allows you to say more no to more things than you say yes to. Because how many times do you start your day, you start lead generating, you start your um, uh, script and role play, and then all of a sudden a client calls or a text comes in and boom, our entire day is derailed. Am I the only one that's happened to? Right? It happens. But why does it happen? It's because we made the choice to go look at our phone or go look at our email and stay, instead of staying focused on the most important things that you needed to nail for the day, your 20% that gives you 80% of the results. We make those choices. So if you're making the right choices every single day, and at the end of the week, you score an 85% or better, go celebrate it. Your results will show up. If you go do the right activities that allow you to build, build your database and build a pipeline of business, you'll hit the closed volume number. But we have to do the activities. So the last part of this is that actual action plan. So this is where you get to go in and put your priorities in. You're going to put your priority one, two, and three in. Every week, you get to score yourself. Now, you'll notice there's no more than six boxes. This isn't a to-do list. This is a success list. What's going to allow you to go hit your priority? If you remember from the example, I said my priority one was to go take eight listings. So what are the actions I need to take this week such that by doing it, it allows me at the end of the 12 weeks to hit my eight listings taken. If you remember, my second priority was to go hire an EA. Well, what are the actions that I need to take in order to be able to go hire an EA? Well, one of the first thing is I, I need to know what am I looking for in an EA? So I need to create a missing persons report or I need a job description for it. Then I need to go post the ads for it. That's my week one. If I go do that, I know I'm going to get closer to hiring an EA. The third priority I said is I wanted to lose weight. So maybe if I need to exercise five times a week for 30 minutes, I need to drink a gallon of water a day. I need, I need to eat fruits and vegetables, you know, four times a day for snacks, whatever it is. Well, those tactics, they're not strategies, they're tactics. Those tactics that I'm putting down, I'm gonna count how many overall tactics. Maybe I have five for priority one, two for priority two, and four for priority three. Well, five plus two plus four, the total possible score is 11. Now, out of those 11, if I only got seven of those done this week, I'm going to score somewhere around a 60 to 70%. That's my score. Now I'm going to go have that self-reflection and I'm going to ask myself the question, what, what, what did I allow get in my way that I wasn't able to accomplish my goals? And remember these tactics need to be smart as well. So you're going to make sure they're specific, measurable, action-based, relevant, and time-bound. So as I'm going through these tactics and on a weekly basis, I'm reflecting back and I say, okay, well, this week I scored a 73% or maybe I scored a 65%. Well, I'm going to go create an accountability group of other people who are running the same exact system. And I'm going to meet with them on a weekly basis. They're called WAM meetings, weekly accountability meetings. Now, we all have a different feeling around accountability. Some of us have fear based around it. Some of us don't like to be held accountable because they're like, oh my God, if, if I put it down or if I go have some accountability, then all of a sudden, like, I'm going to have to go do the things that 
I committed to. Well, hold on a second. Why is there fear around that? If that was your goal, why is there fear around commitment to doing the things that you just put out there? So it's really important that we have these discussions on a weekly basis with other people because you get to mastermind with your peers around, hey, what worked this week? What didn't work? What can you do differently this next week to maybe get one or two more of those action items done? Or were those action items even important in order for you to actually hit your priorities? So then after we reflect and we have that WAM meeting, now this next 12, the next week, I'm going to go create my actions based on it. And then maybe this week I scored an 80% because this week I only had 10 things to do and I got eight out of the 10 things done. I'm winning. I'm not where I want to be, but yet I did better than last week. And you continue this each week. And at the end of the, and you know, what I encourage you to do, and for those of you that um, have a, a MAPS coach that are in mastery coaching, you guys can ask your coach for the electronic version of this that auto calculates, and it gives you your running total for the 12 weeks. What I encourage you to do is after every week, go take the prior week and this week's total and give yourself the average so you know, are you on pace to hitting that 80 for, for 85% or are you still nowhere near where you need to be? Because the percentage that you're at overall will tell you if you're going to hit goal or not. It's going to tell you what percentage of the goal are you actually going to nail. So if I end the 12 weeks at 75%, then I know I'm only going to hit 75% of my goal. I might get a little bit more because remember, 85% means I hit goal. But it means that I didn't do the best that I could potentially do. And I need to go look in the mirror and say, am I really committed? to hitting my, my goals that I've set for myself. Because this next 12 weeks, I'm gonna plan accordingly and I'm gonna go all in. But here's the beauty of this thing, is you don't have to wait until October, November, or December to wake up and say, oh my God, I'm so far off my goal. You get to wake up every 12 weeks to say, did I hit my goal or didn't I hit my goal? You chunked it down. So if you're chunking it down into small increments, what's the likelihood that you're going to hit your annual goal, even though we don't want you to set annual goals, or your three or five year goal? Guys, I promise you the system works, but it's up to you to implement it and own it. If you don't own the results, if you don't execute on the most important actions every single week, then we need to go look in the mirror and ask ourselves a question is what life do I truly want to live? Go back to your seven circles. And go make sure that the people in the relationships go straight to the key relationships box and ask yourself the question, if I'm the sum of the, uh, if I'm the average sum of the five people I hang out with, who do I need to add to my circle so that I can get closer to the vision that I want? Because that's the only difference. It's who's in your circle. Who are you spending time with? If you have a bunch of people with a negative attitude, that's impacting you. Top grade them. And I'm saying that lovingly, right? <laughs> it, it doesn't mean that you go divorce people. What it does mean, though, is you have a choice on who you're going to surround yourself with that's going to help you support your goals. Because don't give up on your dreams. You would never let your kids give up on your dreams. Why are you giving up on your own? What questions do you guys have? No questions? I nailed it. I mean, everyone's <laughs> super clear. <laughs> hey, hey, Sajak, let me jump in uh, as I've been watching the chat. A lot of you are asking about accountability partners. And, uh, you know, Sajak talked about the WAM meeting, the weekly accountability meeting. Um, and it's really important to have a partner in this and, and MAPS would like to apply for the job of being your weekly accountability partner. We've been coaching to this for, for many, many weeks and, and we're refining it as we go because this is new for our industry and we're seeing the results are phenomenal. 
Um, so we'll, we'll put some information in the chat box if you'd like to reach out and, and get more information about our coaching. I want to go back, though, to the, the uh, question that Julie had. Um, what about stretch goals? The beauty of the 12-week action plan is it allows you to pivot week to week. So let's say for the sake of discussion, you did your New Year's resolution one week. I'm going to knock it out of the park like we all tend to do around the new year, and it was way too much. You're going to see that in your score because you may ultimately get to the end of that week and score yourself at, I don't know, a 30%, 40%, 50%. It gives you a chance to have a do-over in week two. What did you learn? Where do you need to manage things better? If you've got a coach, maybe you've checked in with your coach and you've you've identified what your 20% is. Likely you got too involved in your 80%. You know, that's that's MREA stuff. And, and then you tweak week two. And then you give another go at it. The flexibility of this program is what makes it work. Now, on the flip side, what if you're hitting 100% every week? What might be the issue there? You need to raise your goal. You need to raise your goal. You're sandbagging. You're, you're probably not stretching. But it's the gamification of each week. And we all love a good score. We all love a good instant rating. And, and the reality is, Julie, what we found in this, um, and uh, Maria, that's a great point, is, is we can also assess ourselves going too easy. Oh, look at me. I got 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, that could be your ego speaking. Where do you need to strengthen your week so that you're truly moving the needle towards that bigger goal? The gamification and scoring goes back and really helps you assess did I stretch myself this week? Do I need to pull back? Do I need to gain a skill or some kind of aspect to my week that allows me to shoot for that 85% number? And that's really the beauty of, of what this program does. It's instant gratification week to week as to how you're doing. Hopefully that makes sense, Julian, and helps that stretching question. May I ask a, a question around scoring? Um, yes. is, is there, and maybe this is outlined in the book, is there a way to standardize the scoring or, I mean, because we all know we sometimes give ourselves a little too much credit or maybe not enough credit. So how do we standardize that? Yep, I'm going to show part? you a sample of that real quick here. So give me one second here. I'm going to do a share screen. Okay. So if you see this right now, you'll see that um, the example that I gave you, take eight less things. I've got five ta uh, tactical items that I need to complete this week, right? Launch a social media campaign targeting listings, two hours of lead gen for five um, for listings five days a week, door knock 50 homes around one listing each week, register for bold, and one hour of lead follow. -up. You'll see there's five tactics I need to execute this week. Now, each one of those, you can see it's two hours of lead gen for five days. If I only do four days, I didn't do it. You don't count that as a score. So this eliminates the ability for you to cheat the system. You either hit it all or you hit none of it. And you'll see under the hire an executive, you got launch social media ad, um, campaigns, send an email to the database for missing persons report. It's either I do it or I don't. And then the same thing on this. So you can see there's 11 total possible points. I got nine of those done. I scored an 81.82%. The following week, here's my five tactics. I only had one thing to do under hire an admin. And then the four under uh, the weight loss. I got eight out of 10. I scored an 80%. Right? Perfect. Mm -hmm. So if you. if you don't actually get to the point of where you can't cheat the system, you haven't made it smart enough. So this is where I challenge you is make sure that it's truly an action based plan that you've created or a tactic so that it's measurable and it's smart so you can't cheat. Does that help? It helps a lot. So the score is based on literally that number of tasks. That's it. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Uh, if you've got a coach, great. They're looking at this and they're helping you say, wait a minute, you didn't get all the hours. And, and listen, we're getting it in our coaching calls. Well, I got four out of five. Well, is that five out of five? No, then you didn't complete the week. Let's look next week how we could create a scenario uh, where you manage or time block your schedule better to get five out of five. It creates that instant feedback. Yet I'll tell you one thing that we learned, and, and Sajak said it, I want to make sure we come back to it. We're getting really good as human beings, goal-seeking human beings, and understanding what a SMART goal is. If it isn't specific and measurable, you have trouble rating it. 
that's the first sign that it's not a really great goal. So we say all the time, if I had a nickel for it in a week, I'd be rich right now. Is that a smart goal? How could we make it smarter? And we're really honing in on a really specific item that drops into a calendar that at the end of that week, we can either call done. And if it's not done, we're strategizing in the next week, how do we make it a done task? Final thought on that is we start to get the predictable um, needle movers each week. We're cutting and pasting those into the next week as reoccurring activities that we know to be functional in getting us to the finish line. That's the beauty of this. I saw a comment about, well, is this like a 411? It's got similar aspects to a 411, but the flexibility each week um, to move that needle and, and adjust and score it gives it more context than the 411. And yet the 411 for a lot of us has been a really powerful tool. Yet what we're learning week to week and how we can adjust and, 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 and grow is really the value of this. And what I would challenge all of you to do is just begin, start. Yeah, and, uh, and so going back to the 411, I've got people who are still using the 411. It doesn't have to replace it. Just start scoring yourself on your 411. On your weekly actions, score yourself. That's a great first step, right? You don't have to change what you're doing. Just start scoring yourself and reflecting back on how am I doing compared to what I wrote down? You know, so often we just cross things off. Well, that's great, but why don't we start giving ourselves a score because that score actually forces us to reflect back on it saying, wait a minute, I scored an 80% or I scored a 60%. It creates a different awareness than just crossing something off and just seeing a couple things not crossed off, right? Because when we actually see the physical number, it triggers something in our mind because it takes us back and that percentage actually is what helped move us forward. Sajik, let me share one other thought. And, and I got to tell you, every coaching call that we do, we're learning something about coaching a human being. And the seven circles is built to give a perspective of the whole human. In the example that Sajik just gave, there were two business related perspectives. And what was the third one? Physical. Physical. It was a weight loss goal, which would fall under the, the physical health circle. One of the things that we're finding is business uh, and production coaches is we do tend to really hone in on things that affect the bottom line. Yet in reality, some of our other circles are creating roadblocks to truly living our full production self. So one of the things that we're finding is maybe take that third goal or priority and pour more into that seven circle world. Because here's the reality, if we're better in our physical health, how does that show up in our business? Improves it. Okay, more energy, better mm -hmm. mindset, physically fit to get, get up earlier, go harder, beat our competition show up more energized and enthusiastic. Well, if that never entered a discussion or it wasn't anywhere in a goal that we were tracking, we could take our slow, tired, lethargic way into the next day and not hit that number and then not hit the next week's number. So really look at your full self. That's why that narrative outline as to where you are today and where you wanna be is so important. Really let your unconscious mind flow into that document and then make sure that that most important circle that may not be specific business shows up in your plan too. You may be shocked at what happens to your business with a little bit more watering of the other seven circles, that garden, let that garden grow. And then watch what happens. Yeah. And Fritz, it's really, really important. If you guys don't walk away with implementing the plan, go do yourself a favor and go do the seven circles exercise. We've had more people break down and have breakthroughs just in that one page. Yep. We've had so many people tell us that, oh my God, I now know why I was so unfulfilled every day. Right? We're having people having massive breakdowns because they had their priorities all wrong. And guys, I'm going to tell you this, that look, if you're not focusing on you, spend more time on you. 
Because when you spend more time on you and you show up as the best version of yourself, it shows up everywhere else. And, you know, uh, you know, a lot of Fritz knows this and, and, and I'm an early riser, but I start every morning with winning the day. And what I mean by that is my entire morning is dedicated on me, right? It's the more I work on me, I know that I can pour into everything else that I need to for the rest of the day. I'm going to go nail the rest of my day because I won myself. I got what I need for the day. And that fuels me throughout every challenge throughout the day. And if we don't actually work on us, this is where we get derailed. This is where we end the day and we're not happy or we don't feel fulfilled or we let our clients get in our way. Give yourself a gift. Focus on you. And I promise you, you're going to start accomplishing more. Yeah, Kristen, you got a question. Go ahead. Yeah, my question relates to what, how can we um, protect ourselves from when we see that, oh crap, I've missed one day of the do this for four days a week. Therefore, I get no points for that. So what's the point? I'll just focus on something else. Can you address that mindset other than change it? Sure, <laughs> sure. Well, it's about progressively getting better, right? So what I tell people is, look, if you're just going to give up, then what, what are you really giving up on? Right? You're giving up on your ability to consistently get better. So don't just get discouraged because you didn't you know, do it one day. If you have to make it up, go make it up. But it's an awareness thing. If I did four days and I was only planning to work Monday to Friday and I did four days of lead gen and I missed a day, I have Saturday and Sunday. By looking at this document every single day, it creates the awareness of what do I need to do? What am I not doing? And does my calendar reflect these most important things? And as you do this, and this is one of the habits that I picked up, right? Gary talks about um, uh, when you erase something, you replace it. Well, I tell people, look, if it's part of my 20%, it's going in my calendar in pen. I'm not erasing it. Because when it's in pen, unless you got white out, you can't erase it, right? So my morning and my, my, the most important things are protected in pen. And the things that should be in pen, your family time, start there, your vacations. Because those are the things that as agents, we negotiate all the time. Yet the last time I checked, it was God, family, then business. Somehow we screwed it all up. Yeah. It went business. And then every now and then it's family. And then by the way, God just went to the wayside for some of us, right? Guys, get back in alignment. It's God, family, then business. And the it, most it's important like thing is make sure it's in pen. That's a, a, an excellent thought, non-negotiable. Kristen, thank you for asking the question. Here's the reality, if I may. You're missing that fifth day now. You just don't have any credibility, or not credibility, you just don't have any context around it. By now knowing that it should have been five days and you missed a day, take next week and say, what do I want to do? Do I drop it down to four days and feel that I get a win? Or do I say, what do I need to adjust in my week to get it to five? If you didn't set though the week at five and put a score to it, you would be living through that day and through that year going, geez, how come I miss my goal again? This is giving you that instant return to say next week's a new week. How am I going to approach it differently? So I appreciate you asking that question because we're all doing it now. You just don't have any context to compare it to, to say I missed that day. And this program gives you the ability to put a score to that miss and then do something about it. And I'm going to uh, address this because Brad's asked about this. So Brad, you asked about, you know, what's a morning routine look like? So, and guys, just take a deep breath. Okay. Um, and Fritz knows I'm a little out there. I wake up at three o'clock every morning, every morning I'm up at 3 a.m. That's right, Kara. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So my morning routine starts and it's, you know, I get up, I drink 24 ounces of water, right? Because water is what actually hydrates, uh, hydrates us, it fuels us, it gives us energy. Then I go straight into researching investment properties because 
I know that for everything that I want to do and for me to be able to get off the hamster wheel, I want to do it through passive income to fund the future life that I want. So I research investment properties for 30, 30 to minutes to an hour every single morning. After I'm done with that, I go straight into my workout. I do my workout, I go shower, I eat breakfast, and I'm in the office by 6 a.m. every morning. But that's my winning routine. That's my morning. And in there, I'm also journaling. And I'm journaling about exactly what my day is going to look like. Because when you actually look at your vision, you know what actions you need to take that day. And, and I wasn't always like this, guys. But I've read a lot of books. I've put a lot of things together. And I've listened. And if you listen and, and if you read MREA, Gary talks about the energy plan. If you've re um, read the book, Miracle Morning, how Elrod talks about the savers. I've taken all those little things and I found what worked for me. Everyone has something different that works for them. But I can tell you, my, since I started this morning routine, my life has forever changed and I'll never go back. Seven days a week, I'm up early. And I get the most amount of stuff done. And then the rest of the time, when I don't have things to do, guess what? I'm 100% present with my family. And I wasn't like that before. And I'm living the life that I want to live, not controlled by others right now. And it's really important that we actually, you know, take control of our time, take control of our life. And it goes back to if your dreams are, are, are really something that you want to make into a reality, then put it down into a plan and execute on it. But if, it's, if it doesn't have meaning, then this is where we don't show up. So take the time and, to and, reflect. And having said that, um, and, and I'm part of the 3 a.m. club too, uh, Sajak and I are usually communicating. I've got my morning things I have to get in meditation workout. I wasn't like that so many years ago. I am now because it's become a ritual. I will tell you this though, Sajak and I, we got some work to do. And we've talked about this in 2021. Our lives are amazing and they're not perfect. So we're even looking at, you know, shoot, I was in the office today at 545, Saturday. And so is that perfect balance? Heck no. But we're on a journey too. And I get the benefit of having him as an accountability partner. We're not, we haven't arrived. And yet we're using tools like this to help us get better. So please know the journey is never over. Let's just change the path we're on. Any other last questions? And I apologize, guys. I know we're four minutes past and I respect everyone's time, so. I have a question. Sure. Um, your investment properties, do you focus locally or do you go broad? How do you go about that? Uh, it depends. <laughs> Um, and this isn't an investment course, but I'll answer it. Um, so right now I am like everything within my state. And when there's not the properties that fit that profile, I do go to surrounding states as well. And I'm passionate about investments too. So I could talk all day long, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and as I told you, he's my accountability partner. I know he's doing his 30 minutes to an hour every morning because when he sees a good deal, he shoots it to me and goes, what do you think? And, and those are areas I need to grow into also. And it can also be in your 12 week action plan. I have a question about, um, and I might've missed it, or it's just that I'm the mindset of an annual goal is stuck in my head. Um, if you're, if the vision that you're, the vision plan is, are we supposed to be doing the seven circles with a three year vision so that when we get to the, to the 12 week uh, GPS, we're taking, a, we're chunking down a three year goal or, yep. so, or is there a step in between? Nope, Natalie. So when you do the vision exercise, don't put a time around it, but don't okay. just set yourself up on here's what I want to do next year. I want you to think into the future and I don't care how far out, it could be 10, 15, 20 years out. What we're going to do is chunk it down and say, okay, who do I need to become in order to go achieve that in three to five years? That's the question you should be asking yourself. Who do I need to become to achieve that vision in the next three to five years? Because that's the only difference. It's 
how we show up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you go to this 12 week GPS and say, well, let me focus on 12 weeks. Right. Well, you're going to go create a goal, that three or five year goal first, and then you're going to chunk it down and say, what do I need to accomplish this next 12 weeks? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions? Thank you Thank guys you so very, much. Very much. If you guys have any questions or if you need any more information about coaching, go to mapscoaching.com. We're here to help you. You can email maps at kw.com too if you have any questions. Um, thank you guys so much for spending your Saturday morning with us. Thank you guys. Thanks coaches.